all of us are thinking, okay, this can't be happening again. We cannot lose another game, let alone to one of the uh, worst teams on our schedule. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? So, at this point, we were losing to Brown County. Brown County is kind of known as one of the bottom of the barrel teams um, on our schedule. I think they only won two or three games the previous year. Uh, they're not, they were no way, we're near at our level. So, we're coming off. I think three or four losses, two losses the weekend before. They started off with a pretty heavy lead against us, and so all of us were thinking, okay, this can't be happening again. We cannot lose another game, let alone to one of the uh, worst teams on our schedule. There's no way that we're going to lose this game. So then things kind of took a turn for us for the better, and we kind of overcame whatever BS was going on in that game. They started off on us 92. We came back. Now we're up 25 to 13. Uh, we were thinking there's no way this team comes back on us because they were much less of a team than we were. We had we had momentum on them. So uh, 25 is pretty much a low scoring half for uh, us, but had to be a low scoring half for them. I don't care how bad you are if you score 13 points at a half. That's pretty rough. So so we came out in the second half in a. Uh, some sort of zone and to which they responded with four back to back to back to back corner threes making the score 20 to 29 so took a timeout, then we adjusted back to man, and then pretty much the game was over after that.
three, three, three. So currently GCA, after beating Brown County, we were 11 and 10 at this point in our season, which is not a very good record, not even close to what we thought we were going to be at. Uh, while the, our, our next opponent, University, um, one of the best teams in the state, they were ranked number two or three uh, in the polls for 1A, and uh, they'd only lost, I think, two or three games the entire season when we had lost 10. But we knew it was going to be really tough. It was their last regular season game, which meant that it was going to be their senior night, and it was at their place. So playing away on a team's senior night against one of the top teams in the state uh, after coming off a couple losses and then a win to a not-so-good team, we didn't know how it was going to go. We prepared a lot for the game, but uh, not as much as usual because we prepared more for the teams we're going to have to play in sectionals. We were not supposed to win this game at all. So no one was really super worried about playing this game. We'd lost 10 before uh, in the season. Uh, no one was really going and expecting to win. Uh, we were just kind of preparing for sectionals. We were going to play as hard as we could. We start off in kind of a zone uh, man defense that's uh, a lot different from normal zones. Um, we knew that all, all of them were uh, pretty much shorter white guys who could just knock down threes from anywhere. So we had to watch out for that. Um, right off the bat, they hit a couple. Uh, But we were also scoring at a pretty efficient rate, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, that's kind of the first time that our defense started to come together for the most part and uh, people wanted to play defense really bad and people wanted to win more importantly than that. So that's kind of when our the whole defensive thing at GCA kind of started.
With the type of defense that we were playing, we had our best defender styles in the very middle. So any time anything that they were doing, we were funneling them into him. So uh, and pretty much clogging the baseline. That gave us the ability to pretty much stop anything that they were going to try to do uh, because Styles is such a great defender that he was just locking up their, their best player and making sure that he was going to score no matter what. Uh, we kept them from getting hot, which allowed us to get energy on the defensive end and then kind of lose steam. Uh, and that happened pretty much the entire first half, and people were on our team really getting into it. Um, really a lot more energy than usual games. Uh, because we were playing such a high, highly rated opponent on their senior night. We go into the half, we're winning 30-26. We were projected to lose this game, I think, by 20-plus by John Harrell. And we're up by four at halftime. So everyone, it's like, wow, we didn't know what to do because we didn't think we were going to be in that situation. Um, their coach was pretty angry at them going into the halftime uh, because uh, Peyton missed a shot and then uh, when we were supposed to be holding the ball he missed a shot and then got it back from them after they rebounded it and scored it off that on the buzzer beater so the, the coach was pretty upset about that that, they were, that we were able to take the momentum going into halftime um, and you could tell by his word choice uh, how he was feeling <laughs> Second half starts, um, it pretty much for the third quarter, uh, we continue this on the same trend that we were going um, on the first two quarters with Styles just locking up their best players and uh, us, our defensive unit, not allowing them to score anything easy and getting rebounds, offensive rebounds, pushing it up. Uh, Peyton was having a really good game. Uh, when he gets going, it's normally hard to stop uh, him and me at the same time. So uh, we had a couple guys going. Me and Peyton continued to uh, trade buckets with them on the other end, and we were playing good defense. He was getting steals. Uh, Styles was playing amazing defense. Near the end of the third quarter, we were up, I think, 14 points, um, and we thought, okay, this game might be over. I mean, we know they can shoot, but we've been locking them up all game. And uh, that's the first time that our team has really realized our capability on defense uh, when, when we play man to man, because normally, uh, we don't have as much energy on the defensive end, but then we realize that if we're all talking, communicating, uh, we can really play with anybody if we're locking up the third best team in the state and we're unranked GCA, um, not even on anyone's radar, and we're putting a beat down on the number three team in the state. So we thought, wow, we have some potential to do something if we play, play like this every single game.
in the fourth quarter they started to make a little comeback because like I said I knew that they were shooters so they could come back pretty much any time so they started hitting some threes and uh, we were getting a couple of dumb turnovers playing too fast uh, letting them control the pace of the game uh, they were getting a, a nice comeback going in the fourth quarter They had the momentum on us, but uh, we knew they were good shooters. They started to make a little comeback. We had a few dumb turnovers.
Johnny calls a timeout uh, when they had the possession and tells the whole team, listen, if they score, don't inbound the ball no matter what because they don't have enough time to win. If uh, I'm going to call a timeout to kill that five seconds right, right before it hits five seconds, if they score, I'm calling a timeout and then we can regroup and then uh, there's only going to be a couple seconds left. We can inbound it. We'll play, we'll play the odds of them scoring and then uh, beating us with one second left. So we're like, okay, they come down, they hit a three. No one inbounds the ball, their coach is freaking out, like saying, come on, come on, what are you guys doing? Johnny calls a timeout. Their coach realizes what we just did and he's like, He's, he's mad, but he's also can appreciate the good coaching uh, tactic that Johnny used there. Um, so after that, we knew we just had to get the ball in and the game was over, and that's exactly what we did. That's how GCA, unranked GCA, beat number three university uh, in their last regular season game going into the state run.